Hello, Facebook friends, hello. Hello, Facebook friends, hello. I'm feeling real silly, so let's start the show. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Here oh, no, we go. oh, no. Okay, I'll get the crank. Here we go. You wound me up too much. I usually do. Welcome to my show, Tazzy Reads Stuff, where I am Tazzy and I read stuff. That's what I do, I reading the stuff. To you, the listener. <laughs> the listener. Miss Christie is here. Say hi, Miss Christie. That's enough. We have enough of it. <laughs> oh. I didn't think you were going to earn the pillow that fast. <laughs> we are just going to give this back to Christie. What could go wrong? <laughs> Say hi, Miss Christie. Hello. That was uh, for you, Justin. <laughs> Justin uh, said today, Oh, and, you know, I, I like it when Miss Christie hits Taz with a pillow. Uh. I think a lot of people probably like it when I hit you with a pillow. <laughs> uh, I had fun playing bingo with you guys, too. Awesome. It was great. I'm glad he said, I like it when uh, Miss uh, Christie hits Taz with a rake. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't understand what happened there. I, I could make that happen. <laughs> I think you should say, uh, uh, Justin, I think you should say, I like it when Miss Christie gives Tazzy a puppy. No. A puppy. No. A puppy. No. A puppy. At that point, I might have to go over and hit Justin with a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I hear. Rap, rap. Maybe. Peter, how are you, pal? Let's read a couple of books, because this is called Tazzy Reads Stuff, not Tazzy Talks About Stuff All Day and then maybe reads a book in the middle somewhere. Um, I don't know which book I'm going to read first. I'll read, yeah, let's read Harold and the Purple Crown. This book um, is by uh, Crockett Johnson, and Crockett Johnson was, a, uh, um, he was a, an artist in the 1950s, and that's, this book is from, I bet you this book is from. This book is from 1955. And you can just tell by the artwork. And I, I remember this book when I was a kid. Not in um, not in this form. It, I had a hardcover book. And so I remember reading this. Uh, not in 1955, because I would have been negative uh, 27. But um, here's the book. It's called Harold and the Purple Crayon. Here we go. Harold in the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. This is a Scholastic book. Thank you very much, Scholastic book, for not kicking down my door and stopping me from reading. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. I might go for a walk in the moonlight tonight. Okay, I'll change the locks. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for the walk in the moonlight. So he drew one. And he needed something to walk on. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. Did you know that purple crayon do not taste like grape? Yes, I, I did. I Why? didn't even have to... Why would you know? Did you eat a crayon? No. Did you eat a crayon? No. Then you wouldn't know that it didn't it taste like grape. It doesn't smell like grape. So it does. Some, purple, it like some grape. purple crayons smell like grape. They're, this, they're the scratch and sniff crayons. The, the I never the, had any of those. Oh, they're called stinky crayon. <laughs> but he didn't seem to be getting anywhere, so he on the long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across the field, and the moon went with him. I like the way he's drawing everything. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest should be. And he didn't want to get lost in the forest. So he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. <laughs> 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 you know that old saying if a tree falls in the forest does anyone hear her? if there's only one tree yeah it, it'd be easier to hear yeah that's not a forest that but you can't <laughs> see the forest for the tree it turned out to be an apple tree it turned out to be an apple tree and the apples would be tasty uh harold thought when they got red because right now they're grapes 
It's a grape tree. Kind of looks more like a grape tree. It does look like a grape tree. Grapes grow on vines, though. We had grapes at our other place. Yeah. Lots and lots of grapes. And then what would happen was the grapes would uh, get overly ripe in the sun, fall on the ground, and then ferment, and then the squirrels would eat them. Then they'd be rocking around going, hey, what's going on? Get off of me. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to stand guard for the apples. It's terribly frightening, dragon. It looks like Miss Christie when she says no puppies. <laughs> that does look a lot like I know, me. if you put glasses on it. <laughs> no puppies! <laughs> you don't get the puppies! No puppies! I eaten the puppies already! <laughs> I don't eat the puppies. I don't. No, I do not. And where do they go then? <laughs> do they go camping in their pup tents? <laughs> you know I still have this pillow, right? <laughs> it even frightened Harold, and he backed away. His hand holding the pur purple crayon shook. Uh-oh. He's scaring himself with his own jaw. If we were camping, you could run past... Uh, not one, but a second tent. And I can go, Christy, two tents. <laughs> Bro. And, and you can't even be there because it would be it would be in the present, but it would be past tense. <laughs> Suddenly, he realized what was happening. <laughs> but by then, Harold was in over his head in the ocean. Uh-oh. He came up thinking fast, and in no time, he was climbing aboard his little boat. That is quick thinking. No kidding. Quit quick thinking with the crayon. He quickly set sail, and the moon guided him. Oh, and the moon sailed along with him. I'm trying to read two pages at once. Look at me be all that. The moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed enough, Harold made land without much trouble. Ah, made land. You see that? He made mm -hmm. land. That's it. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. He drew an anchor. That way his boat won't. That's right. This boat won't, won't leave. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and he thought picnics... And the thought of picnics made him hungry. I'm hungry too. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. Just a bowl. He's on the beach. How come he didn't have a sandwich? <laughs> a sandwich. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I'll get you and you're not your little dog too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Be careful, you're gonna knock things over. You're the one Hey Barb, how are you? The camera. I didn't push it towards the camera, I was pushing it away from my face. That's like saying, <laughs> You're the one that stepped in the middle of the thing they pretty bear and I no no dirty dirt dirt my my dear bird There was nothing but pie. There was nothing but pie. There were all the kinds of pie that Harold liked. Hopefully all grape, I guess, eh? <laughs> when Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. <laughs> he just took one. Just one piece out of each pie. He hated to see delicious pie go to waste. That's where the pie goes, to my waste. Wop, 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 wop. <laughs> Good evening, Brenda. How are you? Donald. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a serving porcupine to finish up. I think that's the most emaciated moose I've ever seen in my life. It's a greyhound with moose antlers. Or a purple hound, I suppose. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb 
to see where he was. Should I be worried that I hear water running upstairs and we're the only ones home? It's the dishwasher. Oh, it's the dishwasher. Oh, you, okay. You would, you would know this <laughs> if you ever actually, like, Well, I, I, I ran the dishwasher before, but I've never been downstairs while it's been running. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the further he could see, so he decided to make a hill into a mountain. And then he would make a mountain into a molehill. <laughs> molehill. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. Hey, Joanne, how are you? Joanne's here from the Rotary. Hello. He was tired, and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. So he hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. <laughs> I'd be tired too if I had to climb to the top of the mountain. Hey, Glenn from JH, how are you, buddy? Do, 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 do. Your students miss you. Well, miss me. Well, thank you. That's awesome. I can come and do a virtual presentation anytime. I love talking to the students. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. Uh oh. He slipped. And there wasn't any other side of the mountain, and he was falling into thin air. Uh oh. I can't fall into thin air. I fall into little pudgy air. That's what I do. And it catches me. It's like following into a cloud of marshmallow. But lucky, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. And he made a balloon and grabbed onto it. This guy's Again, way smarter. No yeah. kick. And how do you make a circle like that so fast? I'll contact you this week. That'd be great, Glenn. Thank you very much. And he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the of the from the balloon, but he couldn't see his bedroom window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows, and he landed the balloon on top of the grass in his front yard. Well, it's better than landing underneath the grass, I suppose, right? Yep. I read to them, but they said you were better and funnier. <laughs> They're correct. <laughs> I'm being silly. I'm being facetious. I don't know what that means. None of the windows was his window. And he tried to think where his window ought to be. <laughs> Glenn, I'm just being silly. So he made some more windows. And he made a big building full of windows. I wish I had this purple crayon. Yeah, that's, it's a very uh, handy tool. You know what I would make there? A puppy. A purple gray, a purple, a purple puppy. You can draw puppies all you want. Uh, exactly. He made lots that. of buildings full of windows and he made a whole city full of windows. That might make it harder to find his bedroom window. I know. But none of the windows was his window. And he couldn't think about where it might be. That's a lot of windows. Yeah, that's a lot of windows. What a pain. He should have done the same what thing. What a pain <laughs> to find the windows. Yes. He should have done the same thing as he did with the forest. Yeah, and, and just make one window. One window. He decided <laughs> to ask a policeman. And mine on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> he decided to ask a policeman. And the policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway. But Harold thanked him. Look at the policeman. <laughs> I think you got to go that way, kid. Uh, I'm a policeman. Go that way. <laughs> he's got natural pointing hands, that guy. Yeah, he's got... I don't know. Don't, where's your balloon? I want to point to the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mimi, how are you? And he walked along with the moon, wishing it was in his room and in bed. With a puppy. No. Yes, he, you don't know he doesn't want to have a puppy. You didn't write this book. Then suddenly, Harold remembered 
Miss Christy doesn't like people to have puppies. <laughs> I don't think it says that part. I might have made that part out myself. You're not the enough puppies. He remembered where his bedroom window was. And... Oh, he remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. I just had a little uh, um, dyslexic moment there where the words sort of worked together and there was like, boo 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 So, <laughs> let me know if you're doing online funny nights for all your friends, for your fans. You know what, I'm, I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to do a virtual show uh, probably at the beginning of December. And so I'll let people know and then we can, uh, yeah, that'd be great if you guys want to support me. That'd be lovely. I love it. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. That, now I understand what he's saying. Like he knows where the window is in proportion to his moon. Mm -hmm. It was always around the moon. Oh, so he drew the, that's it. And that's it. I see a bad moon rising. And when Harold made it, then Harold made his bed. And he got in it and drew up the covers. Drew up the covers. <laughs> That's an awesome pun. He drew up the covers. <laughs> he drew up the covers. He let it out. Oh, that's all right, that joke, hey? Okay? That's all right. Purple crayon dropped to the floor, and Harold dropped off to sleep, dreaming of puppies. You don't know that. I do know that. No, you it don't. It says right here. No. Right there. See, look, real quick. Oh, <laughs> puppies. Well, that was kind of a neat book. Hey, it would drew what he could. I, I like, really drew like up that a one. Yeah, I thought you would. As soon as I read this book, I'm like, Miss Christie would like it, because it's very, very whimsical. Yes. Great. It um, and whimsicals, by the way, not the best flavor for popsicles. I'll have a whimsical, please. It sounds mm. like a great flavor for popsicles. Mm. Whimsical sounds like a great flavor for a, a puppy. No, a pop, a pop, popsicle. Popsicle. <laughs> I might have a dog on the brain. <laughs> dog on it. One dog on it. Nine. I got a dog on it. Dog on it. I got a dog on the brain. Dog on it. <laughs> I'm very proud of that one. Thank you for asking. There's that one. Talking about dog on it. Here, let's read this book. Should we read a froggy book? Let's read Amos Ahoy. For some reason, I've been uh, uh, avoiding this book uh, to read, and I don't know why. This book uh, was one of the books that uh, Sam and Dave and I, we got when we were at the, the, the MCC store. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, MCC store. So we were going to get books. And uh, now, uh, books are not considered essential. Uh, did you know that? I think they said books are not considered essential. So, uh, I will be reading uh, some of these other ones that we've read before pretty soon. Oh, God. The problem is that some of those books don't have enough words, and some of them have too many words. And some of them are imaginary. That's what this one was. Uh, imaginary? Was a lot of imagination. No, I mean, they're not real. Are you imaginary? Yes. Oh, she's imaginary. No, you're still here. A couch and adventure on land and sea called Amos Ahoy. I was hoping I was hoping I could have a puppy. She didn't say no. Maybe she is imaginary. I'll let you hope. Oh yeah, there's if you were gonna let me hope. Yeah. Book is from nineteen ninety and it is by um Little Brown and Company. Oh that's a good uh, company, Little Brown and Company. This is from Monroe Boys and Girls Department. I don't know what that is. That's uh, probably an old uh, school. Monroe Boys and Girls Department. I don't know. They, I didn't know. What did I want? Okay, here we go. We're going to read the book. Miss Christie's doing this with her eyes. Come on, come on, read. Let's go. It's not the time to talking. But this is how she does it. She's like... Amos is an old dog. He's so old that he spends most of his time on the couch. But his life has been far from dull since the day he discovered, with a, with a flick of his paw, he can make the couch move. Vroom, swat, and crash. Ooh, not bad. Is that easier to see? I know. Oh, Monroe is in River East, Chinchacona. Okay, so it is a school, because it didn't say Monroe School. It just said Monroe. Thanks, Glenn. Ever since then, Amos was always, almost always has fun 
wherever he goes. I love the pictures in this book. It's so 1950s. See? Yep. 1950s. I wonder if this was a book that was reprinted in 1990, because this, this artwork looks very 50s. When Amos returns from his daily outings, Mr. and Mrs. Bobson always has his supper waiting. And it was time for a nice nap before bed. A nice nap before bed. <laughs> I'll have a nap before my bed, and they'll have a little shower before my bath, and then I'll have a little, a little, a little nosh before I have supper. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, that part's normal. That's oh, normal I love eating. I love eating. Well, appetizers. That's what we need. You know what we need? A puppy. No. Yeah. No. We need appetizers. <laughs> appetizers! Early one morning, Amos woke up looking forward to going to his usual routine with a visit to the playground, a swing through the park, and a snack at his friend Benny's hot dog stand. He was revved up for his couch. Miss Bobson said, Come home early, uh, Amos. We're going on a special trip tomorrow, and I want you well rested. I just like, I just love the artwork in this book. It was a cloudy and breezy day, and Amos glided down the street, his ears flapping in the wind. I'll uh, just take it for a short spin, he decided. Up, against, up ahead, Chops, the neighborhood bully, was enjoying a snack. I wish that was me making the noise. Miss Christy, are you eating a cookie or something? <laughs> Oh, I, she's so okay. So sometimes Miss Christie smiles, and I'm like, oh, it melts my heart because it makes me laugh that she's smiling. And other times there's a smile like this. <laughs> so that means you should probably not go to sleep before me, because that's how this beard happened. <laughs> I'm gonna wake up with it braided, which a Amos accidentally interrupted. Blam! In an unfortunate way. Splat! Oh, he hit the... the. See this? He hit the... Uh, hit the garbage bag. <laughs> onto the bully. The bully's name again? Chops. Amos began to quiver. Uh-oh, uh I think Chops is a little annoyed. But he didn't stay to find out. Oh, that definitely looks annoyed. Look at that look there. That's a look when I say... Hey, guess what? I found a great car and it was a good deal. <laughs> uh, I'm like, hey, I think Miss Christie looks a little annoyed. <laughs> a little? Mm -hmm. Mother. For the first time ever, Amos drove right past Benny's hot dog stand and Chops is right behind him. Hey, Amos, uh, no hot dog today. And Benny's customer never had a chance to taste his hot dog. <laughs> Kablam. Definitely 50s, just a 50 style, hey? Just the the simplicity of the drawings and the... But still great characters, right? Chops had picked the wrong person to knock over. I'll catch you, you miserable hound, cried the dog catcher, and he jumped into his truck. Oh, look at all those. That's What does that mean there? Those are bad words he's saying. Blah, 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 blah. Beep, beep. I think you put a lot more beeps than he actually, uh... Well, he's backing up his truck. Oh, okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, Amos was beginning to get tired. Gotta find a place to hide, he thought. Oh, boy, this house looks like a good place. And then he scooted. <laughs> Dogs can't read. It says Dr. Wag, Animal Hospital. Uh-oh. Dr. Wag. Bet you he's got a tale or two to tell. <laughs> wow, they sure have a lot of pets in this family, he said. <laughs> Look at these pets. Are they not awesome or what? Can you see them? Yep. This would be, see this picture here? Mm -hmm. This is the picture. If I was going to paint one on my wall, that would be the one that I put in, out of this book so far. Yeah? Yeah. Sure got a lot of pets. It's because I got a gorilla and, <laughs> and an alligator. 
the bald guy's got a porcupine. Oh, see, look at this. This pig is sick and he's got a sore. Maybe they'll put some oinkman on it. <laughs> oinkman. Maybe he's got a sow leg. <laughs> sow leg. He's got a sow leg. <laughs> you know what the doctor's going to say? Pig, let me help you. Piglet. Piglet. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I'm just hamming it up. Hamming it up. <laughs> Anyway, next page. It's your constant state of being. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Amos knew why the animals were all here. Next! Oh, no! <laughs> the top one. Next! Oh, no! This is not a family. These are pets or patients, he realized, and shot out the door. But Chops was still looking for him, and he was madder than ever. Madder, madder, madder. Down the street, Sam, the furniture man, and his helper were loading their truck when Amos came speeding by. Hey, look, cried Sam, spotting Amos. I could get a lot of money for a couch like that. And he jumped into his truck and joined the chase, heading towards the river. I'm sure this book, this book is definitely written in the 50s. It's just the whole Sam, the furniture man kind of a thing. The vibe is definitely, oh, definitely. a little bit classic. Yep. Sam's very old furniture is what it says on the side of the truck. Amos started across the bridge. Can't stop for a snack, he thought, mistaking the toll booth for a hot dog stand. Amos had never driven over such a big bridge. Why is the road suddenly hanging in the air, he wondered. Officer Barnes could not believe his eyes. Hey, you guys did not have to pay the toll, she yelled in a voice that probably should have mean that the re the... Narrator she's, should read ahead a little bit. Let's try that again. My voice. <laughs> I'm working in a toll booth. <laughs> toll booth. No puppies and give me some coins in here. <laughs> I don't want puppies. I want change. <laughs> oh, poke myself in the eye. That hurt a little bit. Officer Barnes could not believe her eyes. Hey, you guys didn't pay the toll, she yelled. Time for me to go to work. And she hopped on her motorcycle. getting quite the parade. No kidding. <laughs> this one, stop it. When he got to the other side, Amos began to worry. He was getting far from home, and to make matters worse, it was starting to rain. Amos didn't know which way to turn, so he took a chance and followed a line of cars. That seems like a thing to do. I've done that. I've got to a gig in a small town and my GPS wasn't working. I'm like, I don't know where to go. So I just followed a couple of trucks until one of them went to the gig I was at. <laughs> they said to me one time, you can't miss it. It's going to be the the place that's got all the cars in it. So I started my show and it turned out I was at a used car lot. Right on in the ferry boat. Amos had never been on a ferry before. What's going on, he wondered. How come I'm not moving? But I'm moving. The ferry pulled away from shore, and the dog catcher grabbed chops, and Officer Barnes gave a ticket to Sam, the furniture man. Oh, finally, Amos was safe. It began to run harder and harder, and the boat, boat tossed in the waves. I better move inside, thought Amos. My couch will get soaked. <laughs> you know what he's thinking right in that couch? So far, so good. So far, so good. <laughs> he was beginning to relax when a lady plunked herself next to him, opened her bag, and started to feed her little dog. Oh, here you go, sweetie. So you are pretty hungry too, thought Amos. So he rocked his couch, sending a few nasty, tasty snacks his way. Nasty snacks? I'm sorry, I thought you were cooking. <laughs> Actually, that was not fair, because your snacks are delicious. Except for when you make weird stuff, like what do you make that, uh, something, you make something that's really weird. <laughs> you make some weird stuff, like your, your pizza toppings are weird, like, 
Like, uh, like vegetables? Uh, that's, not, that's not weird. No, it's Kenzie. not vegetables. You have you have vegetables that nobody's even heard of before, like the the Braca Braca Tini or something. And then that's probably the worst drink ever. Eh? I'll have a Braca Tini, please. Do you want it shaken or stirred? <laughs> Never mind. I just just throw it away because that's where it's going. Um, what do, artichoke hearts? And artichoke livers and whatever, like artichoke <laughs> kidneys or something. I don't know. You have stuff like that. My, my, the seas are very rough today, said the lady. I believe I'm a little seasick. And she took her dog and left. The fairy lurched to one side. And before Amos knew it, look, I'm in a book. Before Amos knew it, he had another visitor. But the friendship was brief. The, rock, the boats rocking back and forth. Amos is like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, see you later. Then Amos heard something familiar. Amos! Amos, where are you? Somebody on the ferry is calling me, he thought. Well, that's pretty good because they're calling Amos and that's his name. Here I am, barked Amos. <coughs> no, he wouldn't have that kind of a dog voice. A, a wolf. There you go. I'm a master impressionist. A wolf. <laughs> Wolf. Wolf. Here I am, barked Amos, racing onto the deck, but nobody paid any attention. Amos, Amos, Amos. Honey, where are you? Amos? Oh, they're all rude. They're all calling for him. The fairy rocked and pitched in the storm. Amos slid from side to side, suddenly heard a cry. Help! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, he said. I hit a little boy. No, he hit the boat, I guess, and the little boy was inside. Amos quickly revved up his coach and threw it in gear and backed up just in time. Once again, he had company. Looks like you saved the boy. Another dog day of summer. You saved him! You saved my Amos! The woman cried, rushing to hug the little boy at Amos' side. The dog's a... Oh, no, the, the, the captain's will be... That dog is a hero, the captain declared. Uh, whose dog are you? I'm saying in a pirate voice for no reason. I'm not a pirate. I'm actually a full-fledged captain. Pay no attention to my pig leg. No one seemed to know, and the captain in Spain inspected Amos' tag. Hey, your name is Amos, too, he said, and Amos smiled proudly. Soon people were feeding him hot dogs and lining up to pat his head. Oh, this is fun, he said. Well, I'm going to go. That's what I want, hot dogs, I think. Do we have buns? No. Well, let's start driving. I'll have to go start driving. It was only then, when the ferry reached the shore, that Amos thought about the Bobsons. Oh, it's almost dark. If I don't get home soon, they'll worry. The whole crew came out to wave goodbye. When Amos got home, the Bobsons were relieved to see him. He had never been out for such a bad storm before. They gave him some chicken soup. Mmm, chicken soup. We should have chicken soup. Do we have chicken soup? No. And put him to bed. We're taking it someplace new tomorrow, said Miss Bobson. It's going to be a big surprise. Oh, we're going to go in the car. I'm going to go in the car and put my head out there and get some bugs in my nose. That's going to be awesome. Burr, 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 burr. Woof. Woof. It certainly was. And not just for Amos. Amos! Ahoy, Amos! Amos is back! Ha <laughs> ha! They went on the ferry! Yep. There you go. There you go. Two books. Two silly books. Two silly books. books. Well, that's it for reading for me today. I hope you had a good day. <coughs> Pardon me. Apparently, I'm allergic not to having hot dogs or chicken soup or puppies. I'm very allergic. I'm not oh, feeling well. Not you know what I need? <coughs> I'm not feeling well. Do you know what I need? No. We'll name the puppy chicken soup and they say chicken soup's good for the soul. No. It is good for your soul. 
puppies have a puppy? No. <laughs> she said maybe. <laughs> so make sure that you take the time to share your emotions like I just did. Even that, that was a fake emotion. I wasn't sad there. I was just pretending. Look, see. I was just pretending to be sad for a minute because I really want a puppy. So thank you very much for uh, letting me read to you for the evening. Remember to take the time to share your emotions with your forever people. It's so very important. Uh, so very important to share your emotions because sometimes holding your emotions in it makes things worse and it'll actually make you feel sick to your tummy or sick to your head and sick to your heart so share your emotions if you can that'll be very very awesome and uh, make sure that you remember that it's okay to be mad it's okay to be sad it's okay to be frustrated with the situation but you have to abk a B K A B K Right? Always be kind, always be kind. I promise myself to always be kind. So and try to always be kind. That's it. <clears throat> because sometimes you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna be kind. And that's that's okay because sometimes your heart doesn't work as fast as your mouth does. And then you have to apologize. That's all. And never ever worry about being perfect. Because in all that you say and all that you do, you never have to be perfect. You've just got to be you. So make sure you go be you, and I will be me. And I'm going to um, I'm going to say thank you very much to Mr. Justin for uh, playing bingo with us tonight. It took me a little while. He was right on there with a bing, 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 bing to get all the numbers and stuff. Well, we did it over Facetime. We didn't we didn't we didn't have a, a meeting meeting. We did it over the Facetime. His mom Leslie and I, and then he would say the numbers because I don't we don't have TV. Well, we have TV, but we don't have TV. Do you know what I mean? We have TV. We have what am I trying to say? We don't have like channels. We watch the other we stuff. We don't have cable. So we don't have cable. Right, so, um, and uh, so Justin was saying the numbers, and I was I had my bingo dauber, and I was dobbing, and he was uh, I was you should have seen at first I uh, was like taking a long time because my brain was going, okay, what B five, and then I make a joke, you know B, you know, I was like B buzz honey, <laughs> honey, we got to order honey. That's what I got to do. That's what was in my brain before. I couldn't remember what I have to do. And I got to remember, I got to order some honey. So I'm going to go order some honey. And I will talk to you later, later, later. Tomorrow, I think we're going to be reading. There was something tomorrow. Do you remember if there was something tomorrow? I'll hopefully be here tomorrow. Today was book uh, almost uh, 8, uh, 890, I think. Right? No, 890. Uh, 590. I'll stop talking. Good night, Facebook friends. Good night. Good night, Facebook friends. Good night. Ah, uh, may your dreams be cheery and your dreams be bright. Good night, Facebook friends. Good night. I forgot the words for a second. It's okay. I forgot the words for a second. It's okay. <laughs> may your dreams be silly till the morning light. Good night, Facebook friends. Good night. Lots of love from Miss Christy and I. And I'm going to go order some honey. We got to order honey. We got to order already honey, honey. <laughs> I'm such a goofy man. No. She said maybe. <laughs> <laughs>